If you want to find the right girlfriend or wife and you want to transform and level up the other relationships you have in your life, be that business relationships or male friendships, you have to learn to remove the filters from your communication. You think you're being honest in your communication with people. And I'm telling you, partially you are and your intention is to be, but you're not as honest as you could be. Therefore, the quality of the relationships you have in your life is suffering. The relationships you have, they're not as deep and genuine and you're not as free in your expression around those people as you could be and as they could be. And you're not attracting the types of women and men into your life that would add to the greatest level of fulfillment you could possibly experience. What happens if you become radically honest in your communication with people? Well, one, you're gonna offend the wrong people. If you communicate politically incorrect opinions and you state them unapologetically, unashamedly, some people are going to get offended. But you have to be okay with that because You've been trying to please so many different people. You've been trying to get along with everybody. But you have to decide what you want. Do you want to have a couple, a few amazing relationships, one to an amazing woman, and then high quality male friendships, a few core business relationships, or do you just kind of want to get on with everybody? Most men, something that I've realized over the last three to four years of working with men from 30 plus countries, no matter how successful, how smart, intelligent, ambitious they are, young or old, None of them have enough high quality male friends, be that internationally, a global network, as well as a local one, high quality male friends that they can see on a regular basis. Because they're not honest enough. You're not radically honest enough in your communications with people. You're afraid of conflict in essence. You're afraid of getting a negative reaction. And that leads to a lack of, you're not, able to really screen for compatibility if you're not fully honest. So I don't want to impose my views here, but if I were to say, for example, that I love dogs and I hate cats, I actually like cats and dogs as well, but if I were to say I love dogs and I hate cats, some people would say amazing. You'd like me a little bit. If I'd say dogs are amazing, people who hate dogs, f them. You'd be like, yeah, I agree. You like me a little bit better because I say that. If I say f cats, some, I actually like cats, but if I were to say I hate cats, you might say, well, that guy, I love my cat. How dare he? F that ginger! Uh, or you might say, well, I actually agree, these arrogant little, you know, whatever. If I communicate, that's just a very, very tame example. There are some way more politically incorrect opinions that we could be talking about that you can't talk about these days because everyone's getting cancelled, okay? I'm sure you're aware of what's going on. Then some people are gonna get offended. You're parting the sea. But you have to understand that that's one of the greatest keys to happiness. It's to attract a few people who you're so aligned with. Do you think Fernanda and I are my best friends or my clients? We argue about these basic things? No! With clients, it's a bit different because we don't have to be best friends. It's just my job to help you find someone. It doesn't mean we have to be aligned on everything. Well, most clients are kind of similarly like minded in that area. But do you think Fernanda and I and my best friends, or my fa well, family members, different? Fernanda and I and my best friends, let's leave it there, argue about basic values? No, never. We have discussions and intellectually stimulating conversations. Doesn't mean, agree, doesn't mean we agree on everything, but our core values are absolutely aligned. For example, humor. I believe humor should have. No boundaries. You gotta be able to make fun of everything. Now there is a time and a place for it, right? You wouldn't make certain jokes at a funeral, obviously. That's just not appropriate. So timing matters. But in general, if you say something as a joke, you gotta be able to say that. If somebody gets offended, most likely they are insecure or they're trying to control your free speech, right? That's a possibility. So what's very important to understand is that the more radically honest and unapologetically and unashamedly you communicate what you already believe, the more you'll be parting the Red Sea like Moses, some people will hate you, some people will love you. It's a very powerful concept, but you have to be okay. So the benefit is you'll get, obviously it goes a lot deeper and you have to develop more skills and apply for a free initial consultation call if you want to help with that. <laughs> but it goes deeper than that. But the benefit is you'll get high quality, amazing relationships because you truly know that you can trust that person. You can buy, I have stories that you wouldn't even believe. People who were a little bit hmm, politically correct in the communication with me. Then I went ahead and overshared some politically incorrect opinions. We bonded on that. Oh, okay. And the relationship got a little bit deeper. Obviously, it's still going to take weeks and months and sometimes years for these true relationships to develop. It depends on the emotional on the depth and the intensity of the emotional experiences that you have together as, as, as well as on time spent. But if you offer a degree of radical honesty a little bit in an intelligent manner, don't be stupid, don't be uncalibrated, be kind, be respectful, be intelligent, 
But if you offer a little bit and you make yourself a little bit vulnerable, not really, just a little bit, to the extent where the person could agree with, could disagree with you, then, oh, you might say, oh, okay, we actually agree on this. Okay, we actually agree on this. So that's the upside. The downside is plenty of people are going to get offended by you. Now, how do you do this without ruining your reputation or being an Because this is not about being a not about being a This is not about just not being kind. You should be kind and nice and really. But... Trying to get along with people you don't really like, is that really honest? Are you doing yourself or them a favor? Not really. There's people in your life, male friendships that are kind of like, meh. They're all right. Would you give them your credit card? Would you give them access to your bank details? No. Why not? Well, that's a serious question you got to ask yourself. If you don't trust them with, again, there's different levels to it, right? There's friends that are as close as brothers. And the same goes for your woman, right? You should be able to trust her with everything. And then there's like outer layers of social acquaintances. But let me, let's actually let me go on a little tangent here for a second because it's very closely related. <coughs> the word friend in the English language is the most abused word that I could think of. The word friend can on the one hand describe a man who's like a brother to you. And on the other hand, it's an acquaintance you don't even like. Somebody who lives somewhere nearby, you give each other a head nod, you've had a couple of conversations, oh yeah, he's a friend of mine. What the f does the word friend even mean? He's a friend of mine. Do you trust him? Really? Not really. Don't call me a friend. I would encourage you to be way more selective with the word friend. Now, in order to kind of get along well inside and be still what, a normal person, you still got to call people friends. Fine, fair enough. But at least for yourself, have the differentiation between internally, friend and acquaintance. These are very different things. So still make an effort and be kind. I'll give you an example. So in the Dublin Salsa Academy, for example, a friend of mine runs the best dance school in Dublin where they teach bachata, salsa, yeah, bachata and salsa, different styles of that. Amazing guy from Cuba, fantastic school, great teachers. Jonathan, who's one of the coaches in my program here, he's also a teacher there. Absolutely fantastic school. There are a couple of people who I love. Very few. Then there's a lot of people who are just there, who I kind of get on well with, who just like talk to briefly every now and then. And then there's a couple of people who I hate and who hate me. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. Not because I've done any wrong onto them, not because they've done any wrong onto me really, but there's been a few smaller interactions and we really realize we dislike each other. We don't really like each other. And the hate, it's not real hate, but the dislike is quite evident and it's perfectly okay. I just completely ignore them. And they do the same with me. Just walk by each other and we don't even nod at each other. I actually, in a weird way, respect them for that. Now, I disrespect them for other things, other character traits about them, but not disrespect them to the face, but I have a lack of respect for them and because of other character traits. But I actually weirdly respect them. They're not trying to weirdly get along with me and they're actually showing me that they don't like me because I would much rather have somebody tell me to my face and show me that they don't like me as opposed to fake it. That doesn't get anybody of any, of us, any of us anywhere. So they're not wasting the time and I'm not wasting my time. And it's a beautiful thing to actually have the freedom to not have to get along with that person. So we kind of walk by each other and we just ignore each other and it's fine. So there's a couple of people who, and by the way, the way this came about was me being quite expressive, as you can imagine. And... In a social context, when I'm not on video, I'm actually sharing a lot more of my not so politically correct opinions and thoughts about the world or other values. And not just because I'm being but because I want to pre-screen with who I actually have a high degree of compatibility and with whom I don't. And because Abel said that to me, the manager and the owner of the Dublin Salsa Academy, he said, David, you know, there's a couple of people who really don't like you. And Jonathan explained to him, yeah, that's a pre-screening mechanism. <laughs> David wants to see who he actually gets along with. We want to see who we actually get along with well. So we unapologetically, unashamedly communicate those opinions. And then some people really dislike us. And that's perfectly fine. And that's good. Because what do you get in return? Real deep friendships, people that you feel nurtured with, that you truly trust, that you trust 100%. You get on well with, you have so much fun. Real true, authentic relationships. doesn't mean that there isn't going to be any conflict. You're going to have conflicts in any relationship, but you will never have base conflicts. You'll have conflicts because people make mistakes and then you have to apologize. You'll have conflicts because everybody has their flaws. My uncle said, with whom I disagreed on many things, but he was a very, very intelligent, loving and kind and amazing person. He says, everybody has spots on their ass. The only question you got to ask yourself is, can I live with a spot on my friend's ass or not? 
spot being a flaw. And if it's a minor flaw and you're like, yeah, I can live with that, no problem. But if it's a fundamental conflict of values, that's an issue. Everybody has flaws and that's not a problem. But do I trust that person and kind? Do we have the most important things in common? And if so, you're going to feel so happy. But you will have moments of conflict. And you have to be able to bear the tension of people disliking you. I go in there on a Wednesday to the social dancing and I know there's some people who love me. Few people, two, three. And then most people are neutral and I'm just kind of like nice and really nice. And the others I just ignore. Like one or two or three or four or however many. Maybe there's more. <laughs> I don't know. And just ignore them. And you're kind and you're... Because res- that's a beautiful thing, right? I'm not interested in war, okay? <laughs> in, in any way, shape or form. So I still want to be kind and respectful. So sometimes I may even nod and walk by or just completely ignore them. But I'm still interested in... I can be respectful even though I completely dislike somebody. Because... There's a difference if somebody does harm onto you, well, then you engage the police or lawyers and you destroy them legally, right? You use the legal resources you have available and then in a business conflict, if a competitor is trying to take you out of business, you use your lawyers and then you them up. That's different, okay? But in a social context, if nobody's done any wrong onto you and you just really dislike them for who they are because your gut feeling tells you there's something about that person that's wrong. I have no maybe logical evidence, but there's something rotten in the state of Denmark here. Stay the away from the person. No need to fake And there's going to be these moments of conflict and you'll have to be able to bear that tension. And if you can do that, then you can put your intention first of all on, my intention is to be kind and to contribute positivity. And my intention is to seek out great relationships and celebrate life. And to be present. And if you realize that you don't need to become a you don't need to become a But some people will nonetheless get offended and get angry at you. And that's going to be on a dating co- in a dating context, and it's going to be with men. But that's why you need a lot of interaction points. That's why you need to get the skill set of online dating down. You need to learn how to approach women in a real life, screen, qualify, build attraction, all of that. So you can have a lot of initial interaction points. Screen and disqualify, it's like a funnel. And then very few, there's going to be very many top line, like top of funnel interactions here. And then at the bottom, there's a few that come out. But whatever comes out at the bottom is diamonds. It's platinum. It's the beauty of life that life's worth living for because you're going to end up with a woman who's absolutely, absolutely adores you. I make the most ridiculous jokes around Fanana and she laughs her ass off. I can make the same joke around other women and they'll get mightily offended. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. And my friends and I, we're all like that. We make jokes that are not, you know, we wouldn't make in a public way. But nobody of us gets offended. And you just got to write down, what are the core, who am I as a man? Three questions. Jorge Bucay. Who am I as a man? What do I stand for? What do I stand against? What must never be said about me at my funeral? Then number two, where am I going? What are my goals? Three months, six months, a year, right? And then three, what kind of people would I like to have with me on that journey? Woman and high quality male friendships. And the more harshly you discriminate who you allow into your life based on values, not on preconceived notions, well, based on values, the happier you'll be. And I would say my invitation is to really remove the filters. Be more radically honest. Beauty will happen. Jordan Peterson says, speak your truth and you're in for an adventure. Be kind. You can be really kind and charming. You don't have to be aggressive about it. You can be, I know I can come across like that, but actually I'm a lot nicer if you meet me in person than I may come across on this camera sometimes. But... Speak your truth unapologetically, unashamedly, and watch magic unfold. Wish you all the best.